You're listening to another episode of the Just Go Bike Podcast. That's AKA Murph. And that's AP. And this is the podcast where we talk about cycling just for the fun of it. With tales from all over the nation, come for the bikes, stay for the fun, and leave with a smile. Well, hello, Murph. How are you this fine day? Hello, AP. I am well. I just finished a uh what do you call it a indoor trainer workout oh, and no. um it's always funny because i follow it's called join base camp um uh-huh. and you can't join at this point because it's already full because it's a 16 week program but they always call it like the hour of power but they <laughs> they sneak in like this morning was actually 68 minutes and mentally that's really tough when you're on a indoor bike trainer Absolutely. I mean, if it's an hour of power, how am I supposed to add an extra eight minutes to my hour of power? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. No, I'm giggling because I did an hour of power at college, and it was also mentally difficult. <laughs> yes. It was a little different, though. It wasn't a bike ride. <laughs> yeah. And so, you know, yeah. of course, when I was done, I was like, that's it. I did it. I did 68 minutes of power. My day is complete. Wow. Yeah. Seriously, like, but- done and done. Like, you have no more things to on the to-do list you can let yourself go on all the rest of your responsibilities except here we are podcasting together oh well but that's not a to-do that's a for fun (laughs) so exactly um, well and speaking for fun we have a good episode today yes we do but i wanted to really sneak in really quickly that i did complete my 200 miles my 200 birth miles you did in, in november december yes i did so for those of you who are wondering whether or not i could do it I can and I will (laughs) do it again. (laughs) But yeah, so I'm really proud about that. Oh, that is awesome. And you know what's fun about that challenge was there were people from all over the United States. So, you know, everyone had different challenges, you know, with weather or with work or, you know, family stuff. So it was really fun to like get everyone else's perspective. And if listeners happen to be listening to this before January 21st, and maybe you live in the Midwest, um, There is a celebration happening in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, January 21st. Yep, and you might just see Murph and I at that celebration. Well, you'll see Murph for sure. (laughs) Oh, we'll see you as well because you're going to be speaking. And (laughs) if anyone wants to, you know, look up information about it, uh, go to the Murphology Podcast Facebook page and then look up the event. So I won't take up more time on it here, but um, there will be prizes. Yeah, so always going to be prizes. It's going to be a great time, celebration, speakers. All that jazz. Yeah. So, okay. So we do have a fantastic episode for you today. Uh, it's kind of a riff on what we did last year, where this is the time of year where we get a lot of frequently asked questions in our inbox, on our social media, just all around. And we thought it would be a fun time to just sort of address some of that stuff before we get in a couple of weeks, we're going to be talking all route all the time. Oh so my let's gosh. get through some of the other stuff. That's, I don't know. It's mind blowing to know that within a matter of weeks, we're going to know Ragbri 50 route. Eek. I know. That's a little slice of history coming right up. So. Exactly. It's okay. Exciting. So um, before we get to actual Ragbri 50, the Ragbri route announcement party is coming right up. And mm-hmm. AP, of course, will be there. I will be there along with a great band, all the other crew people. And then, well, maybe you, the listener, will be there if you uh, choose to. But let's talk about that. Yeah. So it's a really, I mean, it is going to be a whole event weekend where starting off on Friday, we're going to have a meetup at the rag bar office, which is downtown Des Moines. And again, you have to look that up on our social page. I won't list out all the details, mm-hmm. but we're going to have an event the Friday before where everybody meets up and just sort of gathers. And I think there might even be a bike ride, but we're going to have just a fun way to kind of touch base with each other before the big day on Saturday. Oh, cool. Then Saturday all day is of course the Iowa bike expo where we'll have Vendors from all across the country, I say we are, I mean, Mark Wyatt and the Iowa Bicycle Coalition are going to have, host these vendors, it's their event, and it's always a good time, and it's just so much fun to see all the people that I haven't seen for several months now. Yeah, and I will tell you that that event is free, and yep. um, I think, it, I mean, it brings in thousands of people from all over, bike-minded people, I will say. You can see all the vendors and all the good stuff that are happening by going to iowabikeexpo.com. Exactly. One of my favorite things to do at the expo, well, besides seeing people and getting into the rag bar spirit, there's a little 
bird's nest up on the second floor where you can look down and see all the vendors. And I take a really cool photo for social media every year. So I've already got that lined up with the <laughs> event people. So if you see me up in the bird's nest, you better say hi <laughs> or wave at me or I'll throw a spitball at you or something. But <laughs> no, and anyway. I love I love how those photos turn out when you're up in yeah. the... I thought when you said bird's nest that you were talking about a real bird's nest, but you, you mean <laughs> no. a little cubby hole. <laughs> it is, yeah, it's like a little platform that you can go on yeah. safely. But yeah, And I, so. will, um, I will be at the Iowa Bike Expo walking around with my microphone and headphones. Um, I did this last year, and it was a very, very popular podcast where I talked to yeah. some of the different vendors... Um, so if you see me walking around, feel free to, um, I don't know, say hi. Maybe I'll get you on the podcast, talk about your favorite ragbri or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and if I'm lucky, I'll get to be out there with you. Uh, predominantly, I believe I'll be in the merchandise trailer. So I will be extremely easy to find if you want to come over and say hello. Cool. So I, it's I love being in the trailer. It's my where I started working for ragbri. So it's uh, my safe place. Anyway. Okay. Okay. So then after the expo. It is the route announcement party, Woo-hoo. and it's going to be just above and beyond what we've ever done for the route announcement party. It's going to be so much fun. We have a lot of surprises that I'm having a hard time remembering to not say what the surprises are going to be. <laughs> well, okay, well, I will ask one question that I see on social media almost daily, because one of you guys, let's just say it's you, made a <laughs> post that said... Um, dress appropriately or dress for the yes. for the fiftieth, and everyone's yes. like, ah, what does that mean? Yes. So I can tell you what I'm going to be wearing, but I'd okay. rather have you share <laughs> what the heck do you mean by a dress code or a whatever? Yes. Well, I said wear your wear rag by formal wear, and that is open to interpretation. I think that ranges from a bicycle tux jersey or to a real tuxedo. I Ooh. think we're going to have everything in between. We're going to have tutus. We're going to have costumes of a variety. We're going to have, I know someone who's going to be wearing a four length sequined ball gown. <laughs> oh, I man. mean, it's going to be from A to Z. All right. So, so I could still, if I'm there with my team, I could still wear our team jersey. Um, maybe yeah. spice it up with a, I don't know, a collar or a bow tie with it. A little bow tie. Yeah. Tiara maybe. Um, I think wear something that represents how you love to dress up on Ragbri and where, you know, the spirit of Ragbri where everyone wears their cool outfits. Yeah. But then maybe add a little special something like you were saying, put on a pair of heels or, you know, your shiny uh, saddle shoes or like, you know, little cummerbund. Okay. Well, I love that <laughs> because like that. Yeah. you're making the point to say, you know, hey, Ragbri 50 is different. Let's be different. But yep. it's very uh, open to interpretation. Yes, it, there, there'll be a touch of glitz and glam, but it is Ragbri. Yeah. So, you know, we want to remind people that it's still the spirit of Ragbri that hasn't okay. changed. I love it. Love it. Okay. Yeah. The other comment on social media that I see nonstop is, is it live streamed? And if it's not, mm-hmm. why isn't it live streamed? <laughs> I know. I know. And it is just, it's the number one question for sure that we've been getting. And it's kind of hard to answer because the answer is sort of. Yeah, because we have the format of the route announcement in live is different this year. So it would not be as exciting to have the same format where we have the hosts who are interviewing people and then we have the announcement and then we have more interviews. It wouldn't make sense with the format of the live party that we're throwing Mm -hmm. this year. So what we're going to do is we're going to have first of all, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be doing live social media the whole time. So if you watch our page at the time when the announcement starts, you'll see it just seconds behind when everyone else does. Okay. But then we have a, a video, a very special video, what's going to be the main announcement and it's going to be very cool. So I'm not going to, I think I've already said too much, so I'm not going to say anything <laughs> else, but that is going to go a few minutes later on social media. So you'll be able to tune in, watch that. There'll be like a little preview coming up. So you'll know you're in the right place. Okay. And then that will come up. And then after that, we will have, some live element where we talk we have a couple interviews and like talking about the route Mm -hmm. so there will be some stuff after the announcement okay where you can tune in and have something to watch with your friends at at the bar or at your team uh headquarters or whatever you might have okay so So. if i'm having let's say i can't make it to des moines which would be very sad i'm going to be at a watch party with all of my friends maybe we've done it for the last 10 years in a row Mm -hmm. Um, it will be tiny bit different 
actually, let me say this. It will probably be like better quality because I'm watching yes. a video instead of a huge room full of people that maybe the volume isn't, you know, isn't quite yeah. available for people at home. Yep. That's part of what we were thinking is there's a lot of good content, but nobody can ever hear it because there's always, it's loud there. So we're hoping that this will kind of focus on the meat of the subject and yeah. the good parts. I mean, there, it's all good parts and it's always been good, but yeah. it'll kind of focus in on exactly what people want to hear. And hopefully then you can go celebrate afterwards. Just okay. get you on your way a little bit more quickly. And you can tune into that either on Facebook or on our YouTube page, which is ragby underscore Iowa on YouTube. Okay. So, so yep. to just wrap that up in a little tight circle, you can still have your watch party. You're still going to find out the route. It just may be a few minutes after the people who are actually at the event hear it, right? It will definitely be a few minutes after the people at the event hear it because we want people to be there to be the first ones to know. Yeah. Um, it's going to be more exciting. So, okay, cool. Um, yeah. And back to the live event, right? So people who mm -hmm. are in Des Moines, is it going to be like in years past where you get like the collector glass and maybe your first beer is on the house and a little bit of food and all the excitement of the party? Oh, you better believe it. And <laughs> I saw the glass the other day. It is really cool. It's a special glass. It is going to add a little sparkle to your collection. Okay. So, okay. Yep. yep. And then um, in years past, one of my favorite things to do was the Guess the Route, where you have all mm -hmm. of, like, I don't know, maybe 100 cardboard boxes, and they have all the different towns, and then you get to pick what you think the route is. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that will happen again for sure, both there at the route announcement party and a popular question we've had is are we going to do the online contest as well and the answer to both is yes okay cool so we've had a couple snacks with our online contest it's more complicated than you might think to set that up so hopefully in the next couple of days it will be up and live and i'm saying this the first week of january so hopefully you'll have a couple weeks in january to put in your guesses online mm -hmm. and then you could also do it there at the round announcement party. And those are two different prize pools. So mm -hmm. if you want to try double your chances, you could. The one at the route announcement, you can have as many choices as you want. You have to just have to pay for your little ticket. Okay, cool. Yeah. Okay, and then so, the other question a lot of people have asked is entertainment. Oh, yeah. The entertainment is going to be the Pork Tornadoes, our, one of our very favorite bands to have on Ragbri. And not only is it going to be the Pork Tornadoes, it's going to be more of the Pork Tornadoes. So part of the format change includes more band time. Ooh. Yep. So okay. it's going to be so much fun. They know, they just really know how to put on a good time, how to be good co-hosts of the event and throw a party. So we're looking forward to that. I love the Pork Tornadoes. That's awesome. Okay, good. Well, if we didn't answer your questions about the Ragbury Route Announcement Party, like, make sure you send a message to info at ragbri.com so that somebody can answer your question because sometimes social media, I mean, it might not be the right place because you don't have the right audience that can really sure. answer it. Yeah. I mean, you are always welcome to send us a message, a private message to Facebook or Twitter or Instagram. Oh yeah. Um, so yours truly will probably answer the message, but I don't monitor it as often as the people do at info at ragbri.com. That's a whole team of people that answer that inbox. Okay. So uh, you just got to hold your horses a little bit if you send a message to our social media. If you make a comment on a post, that will take me even longer to see it because there's a lot of comments to read through. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> right. So, all right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's see. Next topic is actually registration, which we all know registration is open, right? You can yeah, go to yep. com and get registered right now. Mm -hmm. But um, another question I see a lot is, how much is registration and is there an early bird price? Oh, you better believe it. This year, we have switched to a tiered system to encourage people to register earlier. However, it extends longer. So here's the tier. I'll just kind of go through it real quick. You can go to the website and see all the, the big detail or all the nitty gritty details. Yeah. But right now, we're in early registration, and it's $200. And that runs through February 28th. Then after that, on the March 1st, it's standard registration. That's 225 so it goes up 25 bucks. Then that runs through April 14th. And then after that, it's considered late registration. And that runs through May 15th. Now, that is 15 days earlier than when we normally close on June 1st. Mm. And both day passes and week-long passes will close on that day. Now, oh, Andrea, you just said that it was going to extend longer. <laughs> I know. I did say that. 
But that's because you are going to be able to register as a Lee Kuan Rider at the expo at whatever our starting town may be. So we have not offered that before. Previously, we'd only offered day passes at the expo and on the ride. So if you decide late to the game that you'd like to join us for the whole week of RAGPRI, stop by the expo on that day before RAGPRI starts and um, pick up your pass there. And at that point, it will be $300, but mm. it's it costs us that much more in like preparatory work to get your passes ready. Sure. And it's also a penalty on the towns if you don't register early in that they haven't had a chance to plan for your porta potty and mm-hmm. your food and your drink and things like that. So it just that's why it costs a little bit more to register at that time. And when you say Ragbright Expo, you're referring to the day zero expo that happens the day before we all start riding. You're not talking about the expo at the route announcement party, right? Exactly. So that will be on the west side of the state, wherever we all gather together to begin RAGBRAI. Okay, perfect. Okay, so you can go to ragbrai.com to get all the nitty gritty, like you said, of the details of registration. Yeah. Um, and now we know that you can register late. Let's see. Uh, when do the wristband numbers get assigned? We will assign those on May 15th or mm, when registration closes, maybe a week after that. Mm-hmm. Say Bef- just before June, we'll assign the wristband numbers. Okay. And why do people yeah. ask that? What your wristband number is or when does it happen? Yeah. Why do they? I, I see it all the time where people are asking for their wristband numbers. I'm assuming it's maybe for like charters? Yes, exactly. Okay. Usually it's for charters. Or if you would like to do a homestay with someone along the RAGBRAI route, they ask for your wristband number for that as well. Oh, okay. Just to be sure that they're working with people that have registered, basically. Okay, so, that makes sense. Yeah. And yeah. we all need to be mindful that this is a, a semi-manual process, so it yes. always <laughs> takes time. Um, it's yes. not like you turn off the registration computer system and then, boop, everyone has a wristband. So I get <laughs> <Yeah>. it. <laughs> it's it's sort of like that, but it's definitely not that. It just We want to make sure that each of the many thousand people that have registered are going to get their the right wristband matched up to the right team, to mm-hmm. the right vehicle pass, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So, Luggage yep. tags, all of that. Yeah. So. Okay. If I want a RAGBRAI 50 jersey, can I get it during RAGBRAI or do I have to order ahead of time? You can order it ahead of time. You can pre-order it right now if you would oh, like okay. on RAGBRAI.com slash shop. You can also order it through registration, which if you're going to register, I would recommend because you do get a discount. Okay. So you can order those, and I happen to know that we just received all the jerseys. Oh, inside That's scoop. Today. That's right. So now it'll take us a while to get them organized, and I'm not sure when they're going to begin shipping out, but okay. we've got them in hand. And then will there also be RAGBRAI 50 jerseys available at RAGBRAI? Absolutely. Okay. And you'll just stop by one of our familiar big blue merchandise trailers. I guess if you haven't ridden RAGBRAI before, it's not familiar, but they are very large, very easy to see. We have big flags next to them. Uh, stop on by. Cool. Yeah, I think they're very easy to find as you come into town. And um, they do suck me in quite often where I'm like, <laughs> all right, I haven't gotten a bandana yet. And now I'm going to yeah. get, oh, I, oh, somebody had a cool hat. I'm going to go find that. So I thought you went to the trailer to see me. And, and to, <laughs> yes, and of course to see you and Erica there and the go. gang. All right. Yes, yep. that's true. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and those are located Two will be at the downtown of each overnight town, and one is on the route in the meeting town for the day. Okay, good. Yeah. Okay, this is a question I see every year, all year long. So are you ready? Okay. Uh, I don't know, am I? <laughs> Where do I park? Yes, yes, that is the number one question. And it is difficult to answer in that there are a couple of different factors to it. It depends on where you want to start. And, and the road ride, you, they have long-term parking for your vehicle, both in the starting community and the final community. So last year it was in Sergeant Bluff and also in Lansing. Mm-hmm. So it's up to you to decide which one you want to park in. And those long-term parkings generally don't open up for many months from now, probably four months from now, just because you have to give the towns time to plan everything for it. It's actually has a lot kind of, a lot of elements to it. Mm-hmm. So the towns are still planning that. So it will be available. Then the other piece of that is there will be several different transport services that you could choose from, and it will be an extra cost to you if you wish to use it. But there are shuttles that go from the regional airports near that 
that uh, starting town and end town from the airport to the place and then back. And then there's also shuttles that go to several of the major cities. Like there's a shuttle that goes to Des Moines. There's one that goes to Chicago. I mm-hmm. think there's one that goes to St. Louis. Mm-hmm. So there's a variety of options kind of depending on how you want your plans to firm up. And that is all listed on our website. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to put at least an introductory page about it mm-hmm. so that people have at least something to go off of. So parking is is well thought out by the communities, the first community and the last community. Mm-hmm. But to be honest, right now, they may not even know that they're going to be an overnight community. So they have to like get their volunteer committee together. They probably have one that's called long-term parking. And mm-hmm. so there's lots of factors that play into this. So even though people are out there trying to plan ahead, well, I guess maybe an easy way to say is there will be space either at the beginning of Ragbri or the end. So you could maybe mm-hmm. plan uh, right now for that, but you yeah. you can't communicate with somebody just yet because they haven't developed those committees yet, right? Yep. So there's also a shuttle that would take you from the long-term parking at the end of the ride to the beginning. So that just to tie that loop shut, if you only, if you don't want to involve the airport at all or any charter at all, you really just could park, leave your car, mm-hmm. get out to the start of the ride, rag bright, and then bike your way back to your vehicle, which is kind of a fun concept. Got it. Got it. Yes. So in a nutshell, go to ragbride.com. You might not be able to get your answer today, but there will be information as we get closer to July on all the different options. But I guess the bottom line is, because I've seen it on the Ragbri Newbies page, um, it's not part of your registration to get transportation. It's Correct. It's, yes. You're paying for the actual bike ride and transportation of your gear, but you got to figure out how to, you know, get there. Or you could do yes. like I do and just ride your bike to the start well, and then finish in, Ragbri and then ride home. In some ways, that is both the easiest and most difficult option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a great way to do it as well. Um, yeah, it's the, everyone who's involved with this and helping plan with it knows that people are waiting on the information. They know that you really need to firm up your plans. So just rest assured that we're working on it as quickly as possible as soon as the route's announced. Okay, good. I am definitely confident that you guys have it all nailed down. <laughs> and if I don't, someone whose job it is does. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so uh, I am maybe a new RAGBRAI participant. I have registered. What the heck is included in my registration? Well, there's a lot, so buckle up. Okay. (laughs) Um, I would say overall the registration costs includes planning for the ride, preparing for the ride, ensuring that the roads are safe, ensuring that um, it's a distance that bikers would want to ride. It's a... This is a pleasant bike ride, a fun bike ride. Beyond that, we also offer something like ambulances and paramedic teams on the route every day, Mm -hmm. which is something that you're like, oh, great, big whoop. But if you had a medical emergency on the ride, you're going to be really happy that they were there for you. Your ride from the ride, your ambulance trip from the ride to the hospital will be covered if you're a registered rider and you have your wristband on. Mm -hmm. And we will take your bike to the overnight town and take care of it until you or someone that you say is ready to pick up the bike. Mm -hmm. So it's a big deal to have that option. It also pays to have quite a few extra ambulances, a specific rag ride dedicated ambulance team and motorcycle ambulance team to be on the route with us. And it's not just the local services, so we're not overtaxing them. Yeah. And the service is well-oiled machine. They're really good about keeping you know, at the same pace as the riders. And Matt talked about it in our episode last week about Bob Mm -hmm. Libby and his team. So um, we've covered that a little bit, but it's definitely a huge bonus to have that. Um, Hopefully you don't need it, but it's there. Yeah. Yeah. They're not just good at being paramedics, but they're also good people. If you happen to see Ben Miller Todd on the ride, it is probably his birthday. Yeah, that's (laughs) right. It is. (laughs) So, yeah. So there, beyond that, we also have the Iowa State Patrol. Is, the troopers are really popular on the ride in that they're at the really dangerous intersections, making sure that we go through them safely and 
also with a little entertainment because they usually have a boom box. Yeah. So um, be sure to say thanks to those guys when they're out on the route. Um, we also are in constant communication with them throughout the year, making sure that the routes are safe and the DOT as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, love the state patrol. Um, hello, Trooper Conrad, if you're listening. <laughs> can't wait to see you. <laughs> and, um, and they stand yeah. out, you know, whether it doesn't matter if it's hot or raining or whatever, they are out there and it is kind of fun when you pull up to an intersection and they have speakers on the top of their squad cars, like blaring fun music. So it's cool. Yeah. Yep. I'll, I like to go out and try to bring them a Gatorade once in a while, just because they have to wear those uniforms with the brown pants. I mean, it has got to be hot out yeah. there for those people. Yeah. So um, thanks to them. Um, so then beyond that, so we have a, a little bit of the safety structure in place. Then we also have your baggage People wonder, how do I get my bag from town to town? Mm -hmm. Well, the answer is we'll take it. You get one 50-pound bag or up to 50 pounds bag with the RAGBRAI um, registration, and we'll transport it from the beginning town all the way every night to the end town. There are a couple of rules that go along with it as far as, like, when you need your bag on the truck and how to pick up your bag. I'll let you look that up in the participant guide. It's also on RAGBRAI.com, but we'll take your bag for you. And if you are curious as to how to pack... There is a pretty fun video out there, right, Andrea? There sure is, and it features <laughs> our favorite, Kathy Murphy. That's me. Yeah, yep. it's just basically, I think you can um, just Google how to pack for RAGBRAI, and it is um, meant to be a little bit funny, but also is good information. And I think my bag ended up being like 35 pounds, and yeah. I don't know that I'd want a 50-pound bag because yeah. you have to carry it to the big truck every day. So keep that yeah. in mind when you... Um, maybe you're thinking about packing for the first time. Yeah, it's totally doable. The other thing that I think is really cool about that video is it kind of fills you in on what you really need in your bag and what you could maybe leave behind. Like you don't want to bring a hair dryer. Right. I know right. it's really important to your hairstyle. You're not, you're going to get to day two and be like, why did I bring this stupid thing? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, stuff like that. It's a good video. And we'll be sharing that on our social media here in the next, in the upcoming days or okay. weeks. So, yeah. All right. So then, Additionally, we have a free SAG service, which is if you don't haven't been on a long bike ride before, SAG is the big van with the bike trailer that will take you if you have a mechanical problem or um, you're sick or you can't ride for some reason. It's too hot. It's mm. dangerous weather, etc. Mm -hmm. So they patrol the route back and forth all day. Uh, make sure that you are safe if you need help. Um, the way to signal that is you turn your bike upside down on the left side of the road, mm -hmm. um, off the road so that you're not in danger of hitting anyone with, that's still riding their bicycle. But they will patrol the route all the way from 6 a.m. when the route opens all the way until 6 p.m. when the route closes. And they do a big sweep to make sure that they haven't missed anybody at that point. So okay. it's a really cool service. And those guys are really fun. We pick our SAG drivers for their personality. <laughs> so <laughs> if you have to, it's kind of a bummer to have to take a SAG usually, and they'll help cheer you up. Okay. So, so I'm already sold on my... $200 registration fee. I mean, I can already see the value of it. Yeah. Is there more? Oh, all right. I just scrolled down. There's a lot more. So I'm going to try to answer some of these a little bit more quickly. Okay. <laughs> all right. So there's also bicycle repair shops and those you have to pay for the bike shops, but we make sure that they're spread out evenly. They're in the towns where you're most likely to want them. Mm -hmm. And we make sure that they're on a schedule so that they're in places where you're like, oh, I broke down. Oh, it's only a few miles till the tell the bike shops okay good. and the sags will drop you in the meeting town where there will be a bike shop so you could get picked up go get your bike fixed and then keep biking okay bike. good so okay so there's that then you also have access to the entertainment that's going to happen every night on rag right okay and this year on rag by 50 it is going to be a big deal you are going to want to get this you could get a wristband just for the bands okay and it would it would cost you uh, less for the wristband than if you were to go to concerts for each of these bands individually, because we got some heavy hitters coming up and those bands will be revealed at the Rag by Rag. Oh, Rag. I thought you were going to spill the beans right now. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I wanted to. Though. I, I, I'm humming a song in my head though. So, okay. Yeah. okay. Okay. So that's cool. So then we'll also have camping in every community where we'll have a big general campground and that's where your bag will be dropped every day. It's always usually a park or a school. It's very nice grassy campground, and mm -hmm. it'll have most importantly showers and porta potties. Okay, so everything yes. you could ever want. Okay, yeah. and then probably shuttles from to get food and stuff like that. Then, like I said, there's going to be porta potties. 
if you're new to rag fry, one thing that I'd like to say about the porta potties is that we usually call porta potties kaibos on rag fry. Mm-hmm. It's sort of a tradition. They're really not called that anywhere else, but um, it stands for keep your bowels open, and it used to be a <laughs> brand name. Okay, so, good. Yeah. All right. Um, I went on travels earlier this year, and we found a brand of porta potties called Honey Bucket. So that's my new favorite. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. <laughs> yeah. And I have always I ca- I've, honey I've always called them kaibos, but I did not know that was a rag bright term. So that's pretty yes. funny. Yep, rag bright only. So okay, then we'll also have free route maps for registered riders that you'll have available at the information centers at the main campground. Okay. Rag bright merchandise trailers, just sort of different. All the different places that were posted up officially. Okay. So we'll also have route signs along the route, which is kind of cool to help you make sure. I always say that it's very hard to get lost on Ragbury. However, it is possible if you're not looking at the route signs. So we have the signs both for the route and for the vehicles that are driving to support you. Okay. Um, and for the loops and the gravel days that we will have. Okay. How yeah. about how about any swag included in my registration? Oh, you better believe it. We're going to. The swag is a commemorative patch. Now, if you've never received the patch, don't diss the patch because they're very important. They are very important. <laughs> sort of, I sort love of my patches. Pride. Yeah, it's a mark of honor that you've done the route, you've done the ride, and a way to show off to all your friends. So and I love seeing where people put their patches, like on their duffel bag or on their shirt or a hat or different things. So Yeah. And the cool yep. thing is you have the opportunity for bonus patches. Yes. We do have, we have patches available if you complete the Keras loop, which is our 100 mile. It's a loop that would make the mileage of the day 100 miles. So if we had an 88 mile day, for example, the loop would be 12 miles so that you would ride 100 miles that day. Okay. And you get a patch for it, which is pretty cool. Okay. But you have um, to be registered to get a patch, right? Absolutely. Okay. We're very strict about okay. that. Okay. Yep. And it's called the Keras loop in honor of one of our co-founders, John Keras. Okay. And we also have a gravel. I think we're going to have a gravel day. I'm not sure if it's a loop or a day today or this year, uh, but you'll get a patch for completing the gravel segment of Rag Bri this year. Okay. So more info on that to come. Yeah. Excellent. So, then, so there is, do you have more? Oh, I have more, but you know, <laughs> I could go on. There's, they're all listed on the website. I don't want to go on and on about the same thing uh, too often, but there's just a lot of perks like that. A lot of it involves making sure that things are planned correctly for you. Yes. And it's set up and ready and it, it can accommodate the correct number of cyclists. And all of that planning happens year round. Like it's, yes. it took me a long time to kind of wrap that around my head that, you know, you guys didn't just show up the day before Ragbri started and then, you know, and then go home and eat ice cream for <laughs> 11 months. <laughs> yeah, I wish. Yeah. Uh, even now, before we have announced any of the towns, before any of the towns know that they're participating, Ann and Matt have been working on the route for this year, both mm-hmm. uh, solidifying the actual physical route and starting plans as far as the bands and how much supplies we need and things like that. So, yeah, we're working on it right right this very minute. Awesome. All right. Well, how about this? How about we end here for this week and let's pull a two-parter again and maybe talk more about frequently asked questions. What do you think? I love it. I okay. always like talking more about Rag Bri. Okay. Well, listeners, tune in next week for another segment on Rag Bri Frequently Asked Questions. Well, listeners, that is it for this week. We both want to thank you for tuning in to listen to the Just Go Bike podcast. And if you'd like to contact us with a comment about the podcast... Or maybe you have a topic in mind. You can reach us at justgobikepodcast at gmail.com. Or you can also follow us on social media at Just Go Bike on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Please rate, review, and subscribe to this podcast, especially if you're a fan. And if you have any extra time, pop on over to the Morphology Podcast for more bike adventure interviews. All right, that's a wrap. We'll be back next week. Until then, Just Go Bike!